How's it going guys, Junior here with Any Mustangs, bringing you back another video. In today's video, we're going to show you guys how to do an oil change. On this one's an 06 Honda Civic, so I believe it's the 8th generation, should all be the same. Um, this one's a 1.8, I believe. I'll confirm here in a second. So stay tuned. So first things first, uh, when you're gonna make an oil change, obviously you gotta get under the car. Um, so you have two options. One would be some nice ramps or a jack. Um, we're gonna see if this clears the ramps because I know some cars won't clear the ramps. I know my cars are lower or do not. So we gotta go the old traditional way of uh, jack and jack stands. So if you're gonna use a jack, make sure you use jack stands. So I'm gonna try to attempt to use these ramps. So we gotta get the car up in the air and then uh, we'll go from there. So as you can see, uh, got the car on the ramps. We barely cleared, and I mean like by like an eighth of an inch, the bumper clears. So that was easier than jacking it up, put jacks on, so all that good stuff. Um, so first things first, we need a drain pan, um, something to catch the oil. Um, obviously, you're gonna take the drain plug off, so all the oil is just gonna go. You can't just let it drip everywhere. So you make sure make sure you get one of these, and then you just need a 17 millimeter socket, wrench, whatever you got at 17 millimeters. And then a filter wrench, and that should be it. Um, obviously, we got to take off just the the oil cap, and then that's as far as uh, oil change goes. Tools required, I guess, would be like a jack jack stands, or a set of ramps, drain pan, 17 millimeter socket wrench, whatever you got, and a filter wrench. That's all you guys are gonna need for an oil change. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. I'm gonna get some lights. So we can show. I'm gonna show you down there where the drain plug is and the oil filter um, of course can't forget you gotta get some oil these cars take 520 gotta get your oil filter which if you're getting a fram it's a ph 7317 and then uh, don't forget a kind of brake cleaner that we can uh, clean under there you know keep it nice and clean down there and then in this case we can also be doing an air filter so that's what that is um, I know I replaced this air filter Probably like 15,000 miles ago, so I'm gonna go ahead and swap it out. Um, so that's why that's there. But as far as an oil change, all you need, of course, is the oil, oil filter, brake cleaner, drain pan, 17 millimeter socket, wrench, whatever you got, and oil filter. So let's get started. All right, so we're here under the car. Um, this is the front facing back. Here, right here, is gonna be your drain plug. As you can see, it'll tell you on this case it sends engine oil. It's gonna be this plug right here. And it's going to be a second 17 millimeter um, socket. So your oil, you got to keep in mind, it's going to shoot out that way. So you want to put on your drain pan, you know, underneath, but kind of forward a little bit because you kind of remember it's going to probably go like that. You don't want to make a mess. And then a uh, quick tip, if you get a drain pan, sometimes they come with a plug for the hole. Make sure you take that out. If not, it's going to overfill on you and you're going to make a mess. So that's what a drain plug is. And then as far as the oil filter, it's this little guy right here. So everything's right here, plain sight, right next to each other. What's nice is it doesn't leak everywhere. Um, I like that about this little car. Um, you don't leak on a frame or on like the wreck and pinion. Same with the oil filter. So first things first, um, we're gonna loosen the cap, the oil cap, I forgot to mention that, that way it doesn't pull there and everything leaks out kind of faster. Um, and then we're going to drain the drain plug first, and then we'll jump into the oil filter. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, take this off. It shouldn't be tight, um, where you won't be able to take it loose. If it is, then uh, we might have another problem. But I'm going to get, and get this one loose, and then I'll pick you guys back up. All right. So, of course, remember, lefty loosey. We'll put this guy on there. We'll see how tight this thing is. It's taking a while. Okay, so we just put a little snug on there. Take that guy off, and then make sure you guys have a napkin ready, because um, obviously you can get oil on your hands. So we're gonna get this off.
there we go and as I mentioned it's gonna kind of shoot out so we didn't make a mess in this case one thing also once you get your drain plug off um, make sure you guys check for this crush washer make sure it still looks good it's still sealing I actually replaced this last time I changed the oil so it's still good but make sure you replace but sometimes they're plastic um, and sell the whole drain plug at Riley's or even just the little washers or gaskets whatever you want to call them um, so make sure you check those since you got the oil off because obviously if you want to replace this in the future either you're always going to drain so now would be the best time to do that so we're going to let this uh, drain for a little bit make sure everything gets out and then uh, we'll go towards the oil filter and then uh, we'll start pouring the new oil in there alright guys as you can see still kind of dripping um, oil if you guys can see let's see well you guys can't see um, it's still doing a couple drops luckily my pen still catches the oil uh, from the drain plug and I also catch the filter so this is where you guys are gonna grab your filter wrench um, that's if you need it obviously these filters have a gasket so you don't wanna tighten them very aggressively because if you do over tighten them sometimes you can't get them off with even a filter wrench or they're so tight that when you use a filter wrench they collapse on themselves or they twist it's not a fun time so um, usually I don't tighten them very much so, as you can see, I was able to do it with my hands, especially these Fram ones have like a grip on them. You can get them off fairly easy, so. And then, no, it did not leak. There's no leaks on here. But that's one thing. Once you start unscrewing it, go very slow because you're going to splash oil everywhere because it goes through the filter, as you can see. So if you turn it really fast, it splashes everywhere. So keep going, keep going. All right, so there we go. And your pan should have a designated area for your filter to drain. So it's got like a little like raised section. And then, like I said, uh, if you don't want to get dirty doing an oil change, it's not going to happen. Um, with the drain plug, I mean, if you're fast enough, you might not get dirty. But with the oil filter, there ain't no way you're not getting dirty with that. So um, now we'll let that drain as well. And then once that does drain, you grab your new oil filter, which we got another Fram one, like I said. And then, what you gotta do, as you can see, we have this rubber gasket. Sometimes, one thing you gotta check for is, I'm not gonna grab the camera because it's full of oil, is make sure the gasket from the old filter didn't stay on the engine over there. So make sure, because sometimes this gasket comes off the filter and it sticks to the engine itself. And if you try to put the filter with the other gasket in there, it doesn't seal right. Once you start your car, you're going to get a leak. Um, you don't want that because there goes all your new oil. You have to get oil again. So first things first, make sure your gasket's gone. And then you grab some oil. And you want to do some on the gasket here on the ring. That way it kind of um, one, it prevents it from really sticking onto the block. And also when you're tightening it, it's easier for you to twist it where it's snug tight, you know. And as you can see, it stopped dripping. So you grab your filter. And then, simple as righty tighty. So you just keep going, going, going. And then, like I said, go go where it's hand tight. And then go a little more as much as you can. Whereas you can't really loosen it easily unless you really try. <clears throat> so there we go. That's good to go. And if you don't really have an area to grab it really nice, like this one is right, and it's got the rubber. Use your filter wrench, but when you do it, do it when you go and then go ever so slightly. You don't need more than that. Because, um, as I said, if you over tighten that thing where it's really tight on there, when you gotta take it off, you gotta remember it goes through heat cycles and stuff. Sometimes when you use a filter wrench, the filter itself, it's aluminum, they'll twist or they'll collapse, so then you got a whole other set of issues. It's happened to me, trust me. Um, I bought this truck and the oil filter was on there so good that even we had to shove a screwdriver through it and even then it took us a few tries to get that thing off so don't over tighten your filters same with your drain plug it's still dripping so I haven't put that on do it hand tight and then go just ever so slightly don't put your whole force strength into it you don't want to strip that especially this, this, this one's aluminum you don't want to strip that because if not you're into uh, doing an oil pan or anything like that you don't want that so just snug 
it's got a little gasket in there, remember that. Um, of course, don't leave it just that tight, give it a snight. Tighten it and then give it a slight with your ratchet, okay? Alright guys, so now we're going to grab our uh, drain plug. We'll put it on here. And again, so like I said, go with your hand. Pretty much on tight there. And then we'll grab our ratchet. And then we'll just give it an ever so slight tighten on here. So we'll go, you know, like I said, don't over tighten it. <clears throat> That's all it needs. Just that right there, you know, because if you want you go more, then you're risking messing stuff up and righty tighty turns to lefty loosey. You don't want that. So we're done down here. We'll just pull our pan out and our rag, all our stuff out of here. One thing I like to do is I'll put the pan back on here. I'll grab our brake cleaner. Um and I do recommend, don't inhale the fumes off of this, wear a mask if you want, it's pretty strong stuff. But I just like to spray where the filter kind of sprayed, where you're twisting it, and the pan. And then I'll give it a touch with the rag, that way it's nice and clean. Um, I think this card is leaking probably from the valve cover or something, it's like got a slight leak back there. Nothing too concerning, it doesn't leave drops yet. Um, this car has like 180,000 miles, so it's a little daily. Um, but as long as your filter isn't leaking from here and your plug isn't dripping, that's what you got to worry about, really. Um, so we're going to go back up to the top and start pouring our oil in. Alright guys, so we pulled our pan out, a lot of stuff. We'll pick this up later. Um, we got to drain it into some other container or take it to O'Reilly's to empty, all that good stuff. Um, so now, we're going to pour the oil in. Now, this car does not take this whole gallon. You just got to make sure this one, in this case, it's five quarts. This car takes 3.7 quarts, so probably stop, you know, and what's nice is on here it'll tell you how much you've poured in there. So we're going to leave roughly, you know, a quart, slightly more. Um, of course, with the capacity of the filter and stuff, I'm probably going to stop at four. And then check the, the dipstick, you know, start it, let it idle, turn it off, let the oil go down. Check the dipstick, make sure it's where it's supposed to be. So we're going to go ahead and pour this in there, get yourself a funnel. Um, if not, it's kind of difficult to pour it in the little hole there, especially where this one's located. So we're going to put the oil in, in there. Like I said, this, the, these Honda Civics, it's a 1.8. It takes 3.7 quarts. So in this case, I'm going to probably stop at the 4, um, just because it has to fill up the little filter as well. So that'll kind of account for the 0.3 or whatever. So I'm going to go ahead and pour this oil in, and then uh, we'll check the level. All right, so I filled up the oil. Um, as you can see here, I left the quart. Well, slightly more than a quart, but pretty much a quart left in there. So we'll go ahead and uh, grab our oil cap, put that on there. We'll start the car, let it idle for a few minutes. Actually, just a minute's good enough. You just want to make sure it's not leaking anything. And you want that filter to get full. So you start it. As you can see, no noise and no leaks. So that's a good sign. If you would have left that second gasket on there right away, it would have leaked. Um, so that's where you want to start it, and you want to start it because again, all you need to circulate, go uh, into the filter, all that stuff. And then, so now that it's idled for a little bit, we'll shut it off. We'll let the engine sit for like a minute. And then uh, we'll check that oil level on the dipstick. All right, so once you let your engine sit for a little bit, let that oil go down to the pan. This is your dipstick right here, this orange um, little lever ball spherical thing. So you pull it out. Um, the first one doesn't count, so you want to wipe it clean. We'll put this back in there. Make it go down. We'll pull it out. And if the camera would focus, as you can see, the shiny parts, um, it's pretty much halfway on there, so we'll we'll try it again. So we'll wipe it. I'm sorry, guys, I'm trying to do this one-handed. Put that in there. Pull it out. As you can see, half the t dipstick is uh, has some oil on there. I know it's hard to see on camera, but you press pretty much where you want it. If you're slightly over half, that's not bad. Um, 
as long as you have at least the minimum. So again, I put, ended up putting four quarts in there. That's where it'll sit um, for now. I made a mess on here with the dipstick. So as far as the oil change, you're good to go. Uh, make sure this is caps on there pretty good. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna tackle this oil filter, this air filter, sorry, not oil filter. Air filter, um, this thing's simple enough. There's these little tabs here. Should be four of them. You just, boom. One more. And then take this baby up. All right. Bam. And then, We'll check this. As you can see, it's not too, too bad because I had changed it. But once you flip it over, I mean, you can see all the lint and stuff. Um, you know, it's not too, too bad. I'm still going to replace it because I already got it. Um, so usually these you want to change every 10, 15,000 miles, especially these ones because um, they're not, they don't breathe as well once they get like this lint and stuff. They're not flowing as much. You got to remember that. Now, if you had like a K&N or, or a cleanable one, you just want to clean it. So you got to do. So... We'll get our new filter, and then we'll put that baby on. And then uh, you'll just put the clips back down, and you're good to go. Um, put this on. I'm going to put you guys down on this one. All right, guys. So now that we uh, made sure the oil level was good, we come in the car. we got to reset that oil life uh, on the dash. So first things first, got to turn your ignition. Like, you're going to start it. Don't crank it. Oops. Turn the wipers on accidentally. So we'll... We'll turn the ignition all the way on, and then, let's see if we can get this thing to focus. Alright, so you're going to go to the select reset button, and we're going to go to where it says oil life. In this case, it says 70%. Um, I think I still had like 400 miles or something, because I changed it last, or I was supposed to change it at 175, and it has like 174 or 6 or something. Um, I don't know what these cars are set at as far as oil life. Um, but I always do like to do that sticker um, to do it every 3,000 miles. I like to do it every 3,000 miles no matter what. So, as you can see it says 70%. We could probably have left it and it would have been fine. But if you want to reset it, you're going to push the select reset button. You know, keep it pushed, keep it pushed. You're going to keep it pressed until that oil life thing starts blinking. So, I'm keeping it pressed. Keeping it pressed. Alright, see how it's blinking? So, you let go. You push the button again, that same button, keep it pressed, keep it pressed, keep it pressed, bam, see how I jumped to 100, you're good to go, so all left is set to 100, then you can set it back, oh, there you go, so we needed 300 more miles for 175, so I changed it 300 miles early from 3000. So I got the filter in there, and then this, this cover, as you guys remember, it comes out, just make sure this uh, intake tube back here goes in there very quite nicely, and then it'll just sit. Nice, and then you can just, you should be able to just clip these clips back on, and bam, you're ready to rock. Just remember to check all your other fluids, now that you're here, um, your part steering fluid, brake fluid, all that stuff. Um, like I said, that uh, air filter wasn't that bad. Um, I think it spent 15,000 miles. I think now that I'm reading the box, this filter says recommended 40,000 miles. Probably could have gotten a... A little bit more with that filter, but I already bought it. I mean, what's 10 bucks at Walmart for that front filter? So, um, went ahead and replaced it. And uh, as far as this video, that's gonna do it. Uh, now you just gotta, you know, safely take it off the ramps. In my case, I gotta make sure to do it very slowly because it was about to hit the bumper. Or if you're doing a jack stand, make sure you lower it slowly. Good, good to go. And you're good to go. Just uh, make sure, you know, once you drive it, check the dip, that dipstick one more time just to make sure. In our case, it was dead center. We should be fine. I still always usually check it whenever, because this is my girlfriend's car. She comes over, I'll check it or something. Um, just to make sure those fluids don't go down. Like I said, cars, especially higher mileage, they tend to either maybe burn a little bit or they have a slight leak or something. So you got to make sure that that's topped off. So that's going to do it for this video. Again, this is, uh, in this case, it's an 06. I believe this is the 8th generation. Um, I'll title it the correct generation because I'm not a Honda Civic guy. So... I believe this is the F generation. In this case, it's a 1.8 liter. It's not the VTEC. It's not the cool one or anything like that. Um, how to do your oil change on this on this little car. And uh, we'll catch you guys on the next one. I think uh, next time you guys will see this car, we'll probably do the spark plugs on it. Because I, like I mentioned, it's got close to 180,000 miles. And I don't know if the plugs have ever been done. So we're going to go ahead and do them this time. 
So we'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace.